Hey there, this is a Meteor screen from Elecro and this could be the coolest Raspberry Pi display that you can get your hands on, except, well, we're gonna get to that. Adding a display to your Raspberry Pi project can be cool. Adding a display with a touch interface even better. Now over the time I reviewed a couple of different uh, accessories for Raspberry Pi with RGB LEDs and now, well, we're going to talk about display with ambient RGB lighting. As I mentioned, this is Meteor Display from Elecro and you can get your hands on it for $109.90 which for the 10.1 inch display ISP panel with a capacitive touch it's actually not that bad price. Inside an assuming box from Elecro wedged in between layers made out of protective foam you'll find the Meteor screen itself and some accessories. Those include HDMI and USB cables to support the power and the touch interface and obviously HDMI signal. There are some standoffs because you can actually mount Raspberry Pi on it. Uh, a couple of adapters and screws. That's pretty much all you need to get started with this display. The display itself it's well made like a cake. It's delicious, beautiful and made of three layers of acrylic. That's not necessarily 100% true because, well, the first layer is the display itself. Then we have a clear acrylic layer that helps propagate the RGB lights around the display. And the last layer made out of acrylic. And the last layer, which is also made from acrylic, this time dark, however translucent one, which kind of uh, reduces the glare just behind the display itself. One of the first things that you're going to notice is the fact that all the I.O., so two USB ports, one for power and one for touch, and HDMI port are inset into the panel, which on the surface sounds like a brilliant idea because you'll be able to connect your cables and hide the actual plugs, which on the most of displays it's just a pain in the neck to see them sticking out from either side of the display. So kudos from that. Unfortunately, this is where my first complaint comes in. They've used micro USB ports. I wish they settled for USB Type-C kind of ports, or even better, implemented the correct USB Type-C USB interface that allows the video pass through. That would be brilliant, maybe not for Raspberry Pi, but other use cases, but it is what it is. The top side of the panel features also a button. There is a dedicated brightness control, a dedicated uh, backlight control, and a kind of like a springy wheel that allows you to select different effects and the brightness of the RGB LEDs. At the back, you'll also find the mounting holes with the correct spacing for Raspberry Pi. So if you have one of those boards, you can just slap it at the back and keep it there. More about that in a moment. What's really missing is a some sort of hole to actually mount this panel. You could 3D print the enclosure and uh, wrap it around the very thin actually basil uh, around the panel, but I would appreciate if there was another pen insert that matches probably like a quarter inch adapter for a tripod mount or something like that. That would be very very handy. My first step was to use the included holes to mount Raspberry Pi. You could mount the Raspberry Pi in both orientations, depending up to you. However, I noticed a couple of issues. First, the included standoffs are very, very short, which means the Raspberry Pi literally just hacks the back of the acrylic case, making it almost impossible to remove SD card. It's not a big issue, you can replace those with the longer standoffs and you're gonna fix it, but I wish a bit longer standoffs would be included inside the parcel. My second issue is about cables, because once I've tried to use included HDMI adapter to full HDMI, so I could connect uh, the Raspberry Pi forward with my display, then I quickly discovered that there is no way of hiding that ugly HDMI cable. I mean, it hides nicely from the screen size, but the inclusion of adapter ruins everything. I'd strongly suggest you to get a custom cable with a 90 degree bend that will allow you to route that cable a little bit better. 
because the screen requires 5 volts at 2 amps, you can't really power it from Raspberry Pi. Trust me, I've tried that and that did not work, which means you'll have to power your Raspberry Pi board and power your screen separately. That leaves you with two additional cables that you have to lead from that display to a power source, or two power sources in that case. I wish that would also be solved by including an extra port that you can use to actually power the Raspberry Pi and keep this package as neatly organized as possible. The resulting mess with the Raspberry Pi board behind it looks actually pretty terrible and I had such a better experience by using uh, Pyro in my case, which I covered in this video. I mean, that's so much neater, but granted, I used a custom cable. I've loaded Raspberry Pi operating system and my first action was actually to install onboard keyboard because, well, you have to interface with the system somehow and if you don't want to use mouse, the uh, capacitive touch display is perfect. However, you need something to replace the keyboard if you don't want to connect the keyboard itself. Overall, the color reproduction, the viewing angles and the brightness of the display is pretty good, so I'm happy with that. And I'm also pleased to confirm that the capacitive touch is pretty accurate when it comes to typing. Yes, you probably want to increase the keyboard size because I found myself making some mistakes caused by me and my fat fingers rather than issues with the display. So everything works very well in that regard. By this point, you probably noticed that I've been skirting around the RGB aura issue for a bit mostly because it's really disappointing. When initially I looked at the product page, I didn't really read into it, but I foolishly assumed that maybe this panel would come with a HDMI pass-through that would enable you to display different ambient controls based on what HDMI signal is like. Or at worst, you would have an access to RGB lights from your Raspberry Pi. The truth is more disappointing because you can do neither of these things. Frankly speaking, this is just nothing else than a custom RGB strip slapped on the back of the display with the dedicated controls and 19 different presets. That's it. There is no programmatical control. There is no options to uh, root the HDMI signal and use that to uh, drive the LEDs. So what you're getting is a addressable LED strip attached to the back of your display. And it's disappointing. And when I've learned that, my first instinct was to actually open the panel up and see what's what and how this could be hacked or just simply made better. The guts of the panel itself are reasonably easy to access and once you remove a couple of screws, I quickly discover what's going on. There is a dedicated PCB that houses 27 different RGB LEDs in a single strand. And there seems to be a controller in it with a programming interface exposed as the dev pads and two cables connecting the main, the screen board, with that RGB uh, PCB, uh, just supplying 5 volts power. After a couple of minutes with the multimeter, I quickly found that you could easily override the chipset and include your data, but you have to remember that this is 5 volt LED array, so you won't be able to drive it from Raspberry Pi directly. You're probably going to need either a um, logic level converter or an additional microcontroller like, uh, I don't know, Raspberry Pi Pico or maybe Arduino. While poking around, I discovered a couple of interesting things. First, the buttons. They're actually cut from a single piece of acrylic, which is brilliant because the buttons are mounted 90 degrees, and that way you can create very simple interfaces on the edges and uh, actuate buttons. So this is something I'll keep in mind when designing my own creations. The second thing was that the middle part of that sandwich, acrylic sandwich, was, well, not populated and you could carve out a piece of acrylic to, to hide additional electronic components like Raspberry Pi Pico or Arduino. So if you sense that I have an idea about smarting up the display, connecting maybe a USB, Arduino or uh, Raspberry Pi Pico to it, yeah, there's plenty of space and watch this space, it might actually happen quite soon. So, RGB fiasco assault, I actually like the display due to the form factor and the fact that it's not particularly thick. And if you actually get custom cables, it's gonna be possible to hide all the cables behind the display and make it an interesting concept for, well, maybe wall mounting it as a smart automation panel or something like that. After all, it comes with a capacitive touch display, so why not? If there is anything I could suggest to Allegro 
would be a couple of things. First, sort out I.O. Allow us to hide all the cables and make this panel even more awesome. That way, once we have a custom cable, so maybe included in a box, a little bit better organization of that cables, we don't have to worry about the sticking out cables and the mess, visual mess they create. Second advice is obviously add smart controls to the RGB. There is a very little point of including blind strip like that on a panel that has Raspberry Pi, as every single user will want to control that RGB LEDs and make something meaningful out of it. If you set your expectations right and you're willing to tinker, Meteor Screen can be actually quite interesting option if you're planning to build your own automation dashboard. And while RGB LEDs might not be as impressive as I had hoped, well, nothing stops you from taking it apart and make it yours. If you are interested, in the description of this video you're going to find a link to this particular product, so go ahead and click on that if you want to get one for yourself. And as for now, you know I do not have a posting schedule. And if you want to see if I'm gonna convert this LED strip into something more connectable, then you know how YouTube works, I don't have to explain you all that. But if you want to keep in touch with me and see snippets of my work in advance, the social media listed down below is the way, best way to it. So big thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.